Hey guys, something a little different today, and that is I wanted to show my full vintage computer system. Um, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of a Frankenstein-like concoction, but its purpose is to be functional, right? I wanted to build a system that could handle anything, you know, late 80s DOS, all the way through the 90s and into the early 2000s. So we'll get into more details in just a few, but it's basically a Pentium 3 with a Voodoo 3 2000 graphics card, and I'm running um, dual boot Windows 98 and XP. So yeah, it's not all period specific or anything like that, but I'm running games off a hard disk and CD-ROM and a Pentium processor. Um, the graphics are running through my Voodoo 3 card into a CRT monitor. So it's not like DOSBox emulation or I'm not running old games on a modern system. They're running exactly how they would on actual hardware as it was 25, 30 years ago. And this setup really just provides over a decade of compatibility with most games. I do have a USB port in the front. This makes it really easy to transfer files since I don't have this machine networked or anything like that. I could transfer with burn CDs, and I do like to install and run games off CD-ROM. Uh, I know I could do the whole virtual drive thing, but playing originals are obviously my preferred way, but burning ISOs is um, a simple quick process as well. Uh, so I have a functional floppy drive and the dual DVD CD-ROM. The CRT is a giant 21-inch ViewSonic G225F. And when I look on the back, it was manufactured in December of 2005, so a super late model CRT. But I'll show some games in a bit, but I absolutely love this thing. Even earlier games look crazy good on it. And looking inside, yeah, no AGP slot. So the version of the Voodoo 3 I'm using is the PCI version. Underneath that is a Sound Blaster Live card. And underneath that, you'll see a network card, which I'm currently not using. I should probably just take it out. So yeah, 512 uh, makes a RAM, um, Pentium 3 running at one gigahertz. You might notice onboard graphics there that I have disabled. Um, I'm thinking of putting in a GeForce 4 MX um, 128 meg. Have to get the PCI version of that, of course. And that would give me some extended coverage probably to maybe 2004 you know games released that year that sort of thing and that's all there is to it the joystick i use for games like descent x-wing tie fighter is the wingman extreme a lot of buttons here and a hat um you're, you're gonna want all that for those types of games as opposed to just like a two button joystick and this connects via game port into the sound card here is the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI up close. Not much to these. Just a simple heatsink. These famously run hot, so I know it's recommended to stick your own fan on it, which I haven't done. So just the one VGA out. This does 2D and 3D, so no 2D card uh, transfer cable required. And this is the Sound Blaster Live card. I just realized while watching this footage that I was touching the gold pins on the uh, Voodoo card there, so don't be me. And now starting with some gameplay footage, here's Prince of Persia, so starting with the earliest games and I'm going to work my way up through the years. So the fear is when running these older games that the CPU will be too fast and it will throw off all the game timings, but most games, 90% of them just work. And the only ones I've had issues with were XCOM and Descent 1. XCOM just runs like it's on crack, and Descent runs too fast in Windows 98 and too slow in DOS, unless I turn off the music, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but there are programs like CPU Killer that can help tweak out this issue. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D runs perfectly, it looks great, even on this 21 inch, because back in the day we all had like 15 inch monitors, right? So these early games really weren't designed with such large monitors in mind. This game is Skyroads, and it's great for a quick nostalgia trip. When I think of DOS, I think of this game, the music, the color palette, everything just transports me back to 1994. And I think it looks really cool on the large CRT monitor.
This game is uh, Ecstatica. If you're uh, unfamiliar with it, it's a quirky survival horror game with some early 3D graphics. Now getting into 1995 with Rise of the Triad. Again, no issues here with running too fast or that sort of thing. The biggest pain in the butt is just setting up your sound initially. I won't get into IRQs or DMA settings in this video, but if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. This next game is Screamer 2, a really good rally car game from 96. As you can see, I'm using keyboard controls here. Uh, I really want to pick up a gamepad for this one in games like it. It'll probably be my next purchase. I'm kind of uh, struggling here around these corners with the uh, cursor keys. This of course is Quake 2, so these next few games, there's a difference between what I see and what the camera captures. I like to play my games a little dark, but I wish I turned up the brightness for you guys a little. I know there are a lot of YouTubers out there who turn the brightness and gamma way up. I personally hate that, but you do you. But for the intents of this video, it might have been um, a little hard to see what's going on, so I, I kind of get why they do that. This of course is the famous Unreal intro, really shows how quickly graphics advanced during the 90s. When you think of the change from Wolfenstein 3D to Rise of the Triad to Unreal over the span of six years or so, And the same thing here with the brightness of Soldier of Fortune. Mind you, I am in an underground subway level, so it's meant to be dark, but I could have chosen a better level for you guys. Now I'm really starting to put my little Voodoo 3 card to the test with Return to Castle Wolfenstein. This game was released in late 2001, and it runs pretty well. And finally, here's 2002's Jedi Outcast. This is probably the limit of what my Voodoo 3 can do. I'm running here on normal settings. Um, I know there is a famous video of LGR running Doom 3 on a Voodoo 2, I think it was, but yeah. Once you get into 2003, games expect you to have at least the 32 meg card at the bare minimum. And then you have some games like Morrowind that don't even support 3DFX cards at all. So I mentioned in an earlier part of this video, I could also put another video card in this thing. Something like a GeForce 4 MX PCI. And I was thinking of having that as my dedicated XP card and keeping the Voodoo 3 as the dedicated Windows 98 card for all those glide games and everything that comes before. That would probably take me to 2004. Um, so 2004 you had Half-Life 2, Vampire of the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Once I get the new card, I'll do another video and uh, I'll show you guys the results. Well, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel.